Brian Pierce lived in his own world. He was born in 1929 in St Ives, and the flat above the butcher's shop where his father worked was his view of the town and beach beyond. It wasn't only his home, but his life. It was here that his parents cared for him, and it was here in his teens that his mother first encouraged him to paint. One day his mother bought him a colouring book from Woolworths, which had an image of an object on one side which was coloured and on the other side it was just a black outline and she encouraged him to fill in the outline and he seemed to take to it like a duck to water um, and in fact well, he soon didn't need to use books like that anymore but he always used that method of creating his artworks by drawing them in first drawing the outline and then filling them in with blank colour or, you know, broad colour. St Ives was a centre of artistic activity and Brian became part of the creative scene. He enrolled at the town's School of Painting and it wasn't long before his teacher, Leonard Fuller, said he was best left to flourish on his own, which he did. Two years later, he had his first one-man show at the Newlyn Art Gallery. His mother Mary helped him every step of the way. She learnt fairly early on that what she needed to do was to organise him. She was an artist herself and therefore she understood about his painting and uh, realised that he was going to be quite special and therefore she would uh, support him in his painting. She had painted herself and gave up in order to look after him and he uh, just did the works and she actually bought the materials and once the works were done she would get them framed, she'd get them exhibited and did all, it was like being an agent really and she did that um, selflessly for the rest of her life. Brian needed this ballast. He suffered from what was then a little known disease called phenylketonuria from birth. His parents were unknowingly both carriers Brian's sister, Margareta, died from the disease. Brian was affected to a lesser extent and was only diagnosed at the age of 30. Five years after that, his mother spoke about it first publicly as his work was put on display in Liverpool and then London. Although, of course, he spoke and we, it was nice talking to him, um, his thoughts were very simple. And so he would never explain why he did what he did. If anyone said, why did you paint it like that? He said, because I wanted to. But he often painted pictures of the harbour. It was very important, and I don't know whether you realise, but a number of them, he called them uh, St Ives Harbour all round, because the way he painted the harbour is if you were actually walking around it, and you could turn it upside down, and the little houses uh, would be upside down at the bottom and the right way up at the top and nobody else had ever painted like that nobody understood where that had come from but it was his own style and he decided on it Brian moved to a ground floor flat overlooking Porthmere Beach when his father retired he drew inspiration from this different perspective on St Ives and had a nearby studio he also painted elsewhere when taken on trips after Mary's death, Janet Axton was one of those who took him out. All that we can imagine is that's the way he saw the world and that was the way he was communicating with us all. Um, and of course his paintings, if you look at them all, they're blue skies, there's not a cloud in the sky, uh, there are no ripples, on, and no waves, and therefore life was like that. Brian exhibited widely and expanded his repertoire with screen prints, etchings and coloured crayons on Conte paper. But despite his acclaim, he relied on a few staples. His parents, those who cared for him, a fascination for trains, he enjoyed eating and loved music and the church where he went on Sundays. The church was in very very important to him and he knew that one day he would go to heaven and that was what was important to him.
a simple life but very successful. In 1985, his work reached the Tate Gallery in London, now Tate Britain. He had a one-man show at the Royal Cornwall Museum in 2000, and Tate St Ives showed his work just after his death in 2007. Painting remained a release for Bran, and he revelled in portraying his own vision of the world, which is widely appreciated and admired. <laughs>